Hello everybody, in this video I have some mixed media art journaling to share with you, but first I have a little haul from AB Studio to share with you as well. Now it is relevant, I am going to use some of these products in my art journaling spread, but if you're not interested in the haul that's totally fine, you can skip to about four and a half minutes. I think, but for those of you who want to stay and watch the haul, um, I started here with a couple of acetates and the first two things I showed you, the first acetate and the rice paper were actually freebies, which I'll explain in a minute. And then I have five paper packs. They are, I'm not gonna go through each paper individually with you, um, but the packs are called Rustical Time, In Love With You, Collected Moments, Old Dreams, and Sewing Bazaar. So I ordered this directly from AB Studio in Poland. Um, I used to buy all my AB Studio stuff from Thompson's Craft Supplies till they closed down a couple of years ago. Then I found a couple of UK stockists I got the stuff from, and then I was finding I couldn't find anyone in the UK who was stocking their newer stuff. They all just had stuff that I already had, none of the newer items. So. Eventually I just gave in and ordered straight from Poland, you know, with all the like the extra taxes and the shipping that entails because I really, really wanted them. I adore these papers so much and as I said, I really, really wanted them. But I will say, I'm so British, I hate saying anything negative, anything at all ever, but to be completely transparent with you, um, just to say, if you order from AB Studio, don't email them because they do not reply to their emails. It's not the worst problem in the world, but basically about six weeks after I'd placed the order, I hadn't heard a single thing. And after that amount of time, you're like, mm. so I sent them an email just like saying, you know, it's fine if there's a delay, just let me know sort of thing. They didn't reply. 10 days later, I sent another email basically saying the same thing and they didn't reply to that. So about four or five days after that, I sent them a message on Facebook which they immediately responded to and the problem was sorted straight away. They apologised, said they've been super, super busy, explained there's problems shipping to the UK because of Brexit. Fair enough. Although I'm not entirely sure you can blame Brexit for not replying to emails, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, um, oh look, here's Conan, my cat, to come and get in the way while I film. Anyway, after that uh, message exchange on Facebook, it was all sorted and they shipped the stuff off, no problem. And they gave me some freebies to apologize. The only other thing is one of the acetates I ordered, they sent the wrong one. They sent one that's very, very similar, but it's still the wrong one. But by this point, it had been like two months since I'd ordered and I was like, I, I, I'm done, I can't, no, nope, I'll just use this one. So to sum up, in no way am I saying do not buy directly from AB Studio. I am not saying that at all, I'm just saying, be prepared for a wait, and if you need to contact them, do it via social media. Don't send an email because they do not reply to those. But these papers are so stunningly beautiful. I am completely obsessed with them. And also shortly after I ordered, they released another bunch and I was like, oh great. But I think I might have found a UK stockist anyway, because they have some of this stuff. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that shop. I also showed you about a minute or so ago how I store these papers, cause they come in the, uh, the, like the cellophane thing and I find those a pain to keep using, to keep putting the papers in and out of. The cellophane can easily tear and like the sticky bit can get dirty and like little hairs and stuff on it. So I buy these, I think they're about 12 and a half by 12 and a half, maybe 13 by 13, grip lock bags from eBay and keep all of my paper sets that are, you know, individual separate papers in those. I have quite a few of them now, but I get them from eBay. They're really, really cheap. So maybe a storage idea for you. I suppose another thing to moan about these papers, it's not really a moan because I love them so much, but sometimes you have sheets that are like obviously for fussy cutting, like this one with tags on here. And there were some others in the other pack, the ones that I'm going to use in this art journal process actually, where there's some frames and things, but then the B side of that is beautiful and you don't want to cut into that beautiful B side because it's so, so gorgeous. But then you have some other papers or pages that are just like, they're nice enough. They're a bit, a bit more meh. And I'm like, why don't you put the more meh pages on the back of the fussy cutting pages? Now, arguably it is, you know, subjective as to which papers are absolutely stunning and which papers are more meh. But it seems so obvious to me, some of them, like, oh, this page has tags I want to cut out, but the other side is a beautiful floral. What am I going to do? So anyway, little little rant there. But generally speaking, as I said, totally adore, completely love these papers. That was another example there, that previous paper, beautiful B-side, cutty, cutty, cutter, cutter, fussy cutting. There we go, on the other. But anyways. 
beautiful papers, that's my point. Anyway, I decided to use rustical time for this art journal page. Um, I'm starting with my usual thing, as I do always, of putting masking tape down the centre of the pages to stop any paint seepage from going through down onto other paper. Pa 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 pa. Why can't I talk today? Pages. And then adding a layer of gesso over the whole thing. Now, it took ages to do this gessoing. I think my tub of gesso is really close to the end, and it's got a little bit thick and gloopy, and I have a new pot ready to go, but... I am the kind of person I have to use the absolute dregs of the previous pot before I can open a new one. So if it's going to take me to 10 minutes to gesso this page, then it's going to take me 10 minutes because I am not wasting that last bit of gesso. Nope, absolutely not. So here I am going through the papers to choose which one is going to be my sort of base for my art journal pages. This is a technique I frequently do with art journal pages. I find Something pretty it doesn't have to be like a brand new scrapbooking paper, not what at all. It can be something from a magazine or a catalogue or whatever. But find something pretty that inspires you and use that as a base for your page and let that inspire the rest of your page. That's that's how it works for me anyway. So I found that paper which had three ladies on, kind of like little faded ladies and grungy textures and stuff all over the pages. And because it was a grey background, I had quite a lot of options for like colour. I could do really anything I wanted. Not that I ever really do anything with exciting with colour anyway, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Once I'd ripped up those pieces and put that, those ladies down, I needed something... I wasn't feeling completely inspired yet at this point, let's put it like that. So on the reverse of the same page is this typed alphabet grungy background thing. So I ripped up some strips of that, placing it over and under the ladies, and I thought that worked quite well. Now, I often make this mistake of starting to place things down on my pages before the gesso has dried. And this is a mistake because when I then pull those things back up again to glue them or whatever, it takes some of the page off with it. Am I ever going to learn to stop doing it? Probably not. But I can warn you not to do it. So for sticking down papers like this, I would usually go for a gel medium, uh, but I decided to try using a glue stick. Um, I, Marta of Marami Small Art usually uses a glue stick for this, so I thought I would just, you know, give it a try, see how it works. It worked pretty well looking at the dry one now. Um, the only thing I would say is some of the edges have come up a little bit and I've had to re-stick them, but I think they started to come up because, you know, I was starting to add paints and other wet media to it before that glue was completely dry, so that's probably why. So if you don't have a gel medium, it's perfectly fine. A glue stick, print stick, whatever, seems to do the job totally fine. You can see there the paper where it's ripped, where, I've, it, you know, the gesso is stuck and, yeah, that was what I was talking about before. Then I'm going to lay down some base colours for the background. I'm going with my Dina Wakely paints and I think I go in with Elephant then Buff or maybe Buff then Elephant. I'm not sure which way round. I think that's Buff the first one. Um, after I got the first layer down where I wanted to add the dark colour, I probably should have waited till the first layer was dry because you can see where I kind of patch it on in places. It actually lifts up some of the previous colour. But in the same way, that does add a sort of grungy effect that I quite like. So, I don't know, it depends on what you prefer. And then after that, I added some of the colour olive. Now, I'm not, didn't love the way this looks, and I do kind of go over it a little bit. But as I mentioned before, I have a tendency to not be very experimental with colours. I often stick with my base colours, those vintagey browns and greys and such, which I know and I love, and... I don't experiment with the other colours. It's a flaw. I'm aware of it. Um, I think the problem is, is often when I do it, it doesn't go right and I don't like it, like with this olive colour that I'm mostly going to cover up. Um, I think the problem is, I'm of the personality type. Now, some people would experiment with a new thing, not be good at it, and then practice to get good at it. I'm of the personality type where I do a thing, I'm not good at it, so I'm just not going to do it if I'm not good at it straight away. I realise that's a bit of a character flaw, but it's I'm working on it. So I brought in the colour Antique, which is a dark metallic gold. Covered that up, blended in the olive a little bit more. I don't completely hate it. It was just giving a slight Halloween-y vibe, that olive colour. I think you could obviously use it in different ways and it wouldn't, but just here I... 
wasn't my favourite, but I, I experimented with a different colour, so please be proud of me. I tried. So I am going to dry that layer of paint before I start adding some stamping. The first is a new stamp I got from, I bought it from Paper Mania. Paper Mania? No. Oh my goodness, what's the name of the shop? Paper Chase, Paper Mania, Paper... Ah! Paper Maze. That's the one we got there in the end. Um, what was I saying? Stamps. Yes. Bought them from Paper Maze. The first one was a 49 and Market stamp, which is kind of like this corrugated metal style thing. And I used the ink. Um, stays on... I did write it down somewhere. Timber Brown. And then this dot stamp is a Kayser Craft one and it's like little, little tiny tiny dots but that same exact pattern is on the paper with the ladies so I thought brilliant it matches exactly it's like white and grey on the papers I used archival ink in sepia for the pages oh my goodness it's actually really really hard to see on the camera but you can see it better in person I promise you but yeah that worked out really well that kind of tied in together so I was quite pleased with that I cut out these butterflies from the AB Studio paper pack and then I needed a base for them so I pulled out this burlap from my stash, cut it down a bit, uh, pulled out some of the edges, you know, the little stringy bits to rough it up a bit and then I did use gel medium to stick this down because I don't trust that a glue stick is going to hold down the burlap. When it comes to fabrics materials I like to use something reliable like a gel medium. I am going around those butterflies with Distress Oxide in gathered twigs just to blend them in and hide the little white fussy cutting lines. And then, little confession, when I fussy cut butterflies, I never cut the antenna because I can't be bothered and it's too fiddly and you can't really even tell when you use them in the project anyway. So, there we go. If you, if you freak out about fussy cutting butterflies, just don't bother with the antenna. Nobody notices anyway. Next up, I, I wanted words across those butterflies. I had quite a, like a set image in my mind of like a longer, thinner quote strip going across them. I did go for Tim Holtz clipping stickers, but then I couldn't find any like the right length I wanted. So I pulled out this Art by Marlene stickers pack. This is a great stickers pack, by the way, a word sentiments pack, because you get six pages of sentiments in each colour, so craft white and black and there's six of each, so it's just fabulous and it has a mix of like serious nice quotes and then like snarky funny ones as well, so I really like that pack. I just picked it up randomly on Amazon one day. Um, got those down, added some more of the gathered twigs oxide around those to dirty them up a little bit and there's something was really missing from my page at this point. I couldn't quite put my finger on it but something was needed. So what I've done is I have taken a white gel pen and I'm going around the pictures of those, I think they're Edwardian ladies, and just enhancing a couple of their features, like their eyes and hair and in some of them where like you can't really see the shape of something because of like the grungy nature of paper. I've, you know, given the lady in the bottom left a bit more neck and stuff like that. Just it enhanced them a little bit. It gave the page something else. And then I pulled out a white Posca paint marker and I'm doing some illegible journaling on the page as well. Adding that illegible writing to both the background and then going over onto the bits of paper as well helps everything sort of blend in together. And doing illegible journaling is so much fun. I love it because I just write whatever I want and I'm no, I'm never going to be able to read it again. No one's going to be able to read it again, but it's kind of fun. It can... Sometimes I have a really angry rant about something and then other times I'm there like, this guy is a little bit cloudy today and I can see a spider on my wall. And do you know what I mean? Just complete nonsense like that. So it's fun. It's cathartic. Here I'm taking a Stabilo Woody pencil and using it to add lots of definition around all the different elements on my page and then using uh, water on a brush, obviously, to activate the pencil and help it stick out a little bit. I also used it more on those phrase stickers because again I wanted them to be a little bit more grungy for the whole page and then I'm going to finish off with some splatters. This is Distress Spray Stain I think in the colour Tarnished Brass and I think that yeah that's the last thing I do to these pages so there we go. Thank you so so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave me a thumbs up, chat to me down in the comments, subscribe if you haven't already. All the usual things that YouTubers say at the end of the video. And yep, I'm going to show a few pictures at the end here of what it looks like. And uh, then I'm going to go. Thank you so so much again.
I am going. Bye-bye.